I've done a lot of story times in my time as a content creator. I've done stuff about my past as a competitive video game player. I've done stuff about my past as an esports host, consultant, all that stuff. But I've never really let you guys in on my personal life, on what has happened to me, Zach, the guy under the Coney hat, okay? There has been a story that I have been wanting to tell for probably like six, seven years. And it's come out in bits and pieces and parts, but it's never quite come out all at once. I am, uh, I am both pleased and dismayed to announce that, uh, tonight is the night. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the story of the $5,000 booty call. A quick disclaimer before we get started. The events herein are harrowingly true. Names have been changed to protect the innocent, but all of these things happened a very long time ago between two people at a very confusing time in their lives. There are no hard feelings. Do not use this as an excuse to harass or demean or be weird. Just please don't be weird. You, you're gonna have two emotions during this. You're either gonna be outraged or omega lulling. Either way, just don't be weird about it, okay? We start with a prologue. This is a story of young love, first love, and an e-romance. Our story begins, as many stories often do, on AOL Instant Messenger. The year is 2003, I think, and I am a young, sprightly 15-year-old uh, inhabiting online spaces. I don't remember exactly where I was at the time. I genuinely think it might have been a Pokemon fan chat. I was a big fan of Gen 1. So I'm on AOL Instant Messenger, and I'm in a couple chat rooms, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm meeting some friends and talking about Pokemon, some of the stuff that I'm interested in. And I come across a young lady. We'll call her Pam. Pam this evening is being played by Oscar award-winning actress Natalie Portman. <laughs> and Pam and I start, you know, a friendship. We both like Pokemon. Our favorite Pokemon, I think, at the time was Eevee. We both liked Misty the best out of all the gym leaders. We had a lot, of, we had a lot in common. And so we started sending messages back and forth. Do you like Pikachu? Oh my god! Yes, I do! Clown face emoji. We had to get kind of creative back then. <laughs> awesome. Got a little bold with that heart, but you know, gotta seal the deal sometimes. This is not before you had any reason to doubt people who they were, who they say they are on the internet, but it was before there were a lot of high profile cases. And I, I think in, in hindsight, I'm very lucky that Pam did end up being Pam, okay? <laughs> the, the, the way this story ends is not, like, it's not that she wasn't Pam, she was Pam. But anyway, we talk, okay? And we start talking for a while and we, we, we bond together over the course of months, even a year. I can't remember how long it was, but we've been talking for a very long time. And so we thought it'd be kind of cool to meet each other. Only one problem. This is the East Coast of the United States for all my Euro friends. I live here, okay? This is Maryland. I'm roughly here, okay? Pam lives in Massachusetts. Doesn't look that far, right? But it's about a seven hour drive. But we talk a bunch and eventually she comes up with an idea. Hey, my friend just got her license. Her friend is named Tiffany, being played tonight by sensational funny woman Melissa McCarthy. I don't like Tiffany. Tiffany, though, does have a driver's license. And Pam and Tiffany decide they're gonna hop in a car and come all the way down to Maryland to meet me. Here they come! They come all the way down to Maryland. Nothing goes wrong. I meet them. I meet Tiffany. She's, she's kind of annoying, but whatever. She, I don't, I didn't expect to meet her. And I meet Pam. And me and Pam hit it off immediately. Which normally, th that doesn't always happen with people online, right? Even in this age here. Me and Pam meet each other. We do all kinds of stuff. We hang out. We talk. We play Mario Kart together. We go to the mall together. We have a great time. There was one small incident involving, uh, Hulk hands? I found these electronic Hulk hands at KB Toys. I'm 15 years old. These are the funniest fucking things I have ever seen. Something about them on your fists, making noise when you punch. I thought they were so fucking funny. Pam does not. Are you really gonna buy those? Hell yeah, I am. That shit's funny. Keep in mind, I wasn't a streamer back then. There was no reason for me to buy the Hulk hands. It's not like there was a bit. I don't know if you should be buying Hulk hands. I don't think you make enough money for that. K 
kind of a red flag, right? Kind of uh, killing my dreams here, but the rest of everything went well. But after we hang out for like three or four days, unfortunately, the time has come to an end. It is the summer. She's got to go home. It was a very emotional uh, departure, by the way. We all cried. Not Tiffany. She was a bitch. But we all cried. I shouldn't be this mean to Tiffany. She was fine. She was fine. She had a big crush on my friend who we hung out with a lot there. No, my friend was not into her. But anyway, they all leave, and I'm heartbroken. All the way back up to Massachusetts. I am so heartbroken, in fact, and I swear to God this is true. My mom, played here by the inimitable Kathy Bates, literally gets in her car, and the day after they drive back to Massachusetts, she drives me up there so we could spend more time together. I'm not kidding. W mom, I literally couldn't believe it. We spent more time together that week, and then I went back home. This was just the beginning of a beautiful relationship. Act one, the winds of change. Uh, we kept talking, right? For, I don't know, six months, maybe a year. Quite of a long time. We have both changed quite a bit. You know, you're at that stage where you're, you're kind of growing as a person rapidly. And, uh, I was kind of still the same as I've always been. <laughs> I stopped maturing at 14 or so. So, we keep talking. How's school going? Fine. Awesome. I didn't know any better. I didn't know women could, like, be mad at you without saying it. I don't know what exactly was going on. I think it's just people change. And if you're not around, you don't get to see it. We start, we kept talking, and things were a little bit icier, a little bit colder. She was just kind of, I don't know, distant. But I was too dumb to know what that was. For you see, I was working. I was trying to get the funds together so I could go visit her again. This meant a lot to me. I wanted to go see her. I worked at an ice cream parlor. Now, I had to work pretty hard. In case you guys don't know, the minimum wage is a son of a bitch. It's been that way for quite a bit. But back in 2004, which I think is when this happened, it was dire. $5.15 in the state of Maryland. Now, the average train ticket to get from Baltimore to Boston so I could be reunited with Pam was between 134 at $259. Do not believe the Amtrak ticket $35. It was in between those two. In case you're wondering how many hours that is, don't worry, I did the math. It's about 26 hours of work. That's more than a day of labor. That's th over three eight-hour shifts. I was, uh, I was miserable, okay? Eventually, I worked 26 hours times two because it was round trip. And eventually, it is finally my time to head on up to Boston to meet Pam once more. Choo-choo! So I make it all the way up to Massachusetts. Pam is there to meet me at the station, but she seems somewhat cold. Hey, how's it going? That was a really long trade ride. Okay. Uh, really good to see you. I've been, I was hoping that we could have this meet up for a while. Yeah. Oh, okay. I got, I got some pretty bad vibes. But hey, she wanted me to come up here. She never said that she didn't. Her and I were talking this whole time and we were planning this out. We wanted to meet each other. So, or so I thought. So what do you want to do? I don't know. Uh, well, I'm in a state I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm in a, a, basically a foreign country. I don't know what happens in Massachusetts. We hang out at the mall. I don't know where it is, somewhere around Boston. And I'm trying to have fun, you know what I mean? I'm trying to have a good time. LMAO, look at those signs, aren't those silly? Yeah. It was a scary position to be in, right? I had just spent $250, roughly, to take a train ticket up to see this girl, and she just was not into me at all. Eventually, we end up going to dinner at a friendlies, and we're ordering, I'm making jokes about the face on the menu. Have you guys ever seen oh, Omega Laugh? <laughs> look at that. Oh my god, it is like the clown emoticon. Look at that! And as I'm trying to, you know, I'm, I'm working game, right? She reaches over across the table and she tells me, I think this is just going to be a friend's visit. Uh... Dear viewer, I realized that I forgot to mention to you, I was set to be in Massachusetts for a week. This was a week-long trip. And the first night of me being there, 
She told me it was a friend visit. I don't know what to do. I say, okay. And uh, I really don't want to be around her much anymore because I'm 16 years old. My heart is broken for the first time and I am stifling back tears. I am not proud of saying this, but do you guys want to know the first thing that I did? I found the arcade and I played Pump It Up for three hours. POV, you just had your heart broken by the girl of your dreams at 16. <laughs> <laughs> My set was Psycho's Pose, Beethoven, Virus, and Final Audition. Anyway, it was really hard to play through the tears. I was legitimately sobbing. <laughs> it, it was a traumatic experience. But eventually she comes to find me and she says, My mom's here. We're gonna go. This is where things get even worse. For you see, we weren't just going back to their house. It wasn't her mom that came to pick us up. It was Tiffany. And we weren't going home. We were going to a house party. We went to a fucking house party 600 miles away from my home where I know nobody there. Everyone is drinking. Some people are high as fuck. And I'm here at a party, just a fucking wallflower. The only person I know in the room is a girl th that I thought was the love of my life that just fucking rejected me at a friendlies. It's pretty bad. Eventually, <laughs> Tiffany drives us back to Pam's house and I go to the basement and cry myself to sleep on the couch. This is one of the worst nights of my life. Now, this is why I said in the disclaimer, guys, don't direct it. This is so stupid, right? I was 16 years old. We weren't gonna make it, but it's real back then, you know? You feel it. I was deciding what I should do for the next week while I was in Massachusetts, I, I I couldn't stay there, right? She wasn't into me. I don't want to have a friend's visit. I'm staying with the one person I don't like. Eventually, I wake up and I'm like, hey, I'm just going to leave. And Pam's like, okay. So the next day, I pay more money to get on the train and come back to Maryland a day after I went. This was one of the hardest lessons I ever had to learn, you know, that... Some things aren't meant to work out. And to be the one who got dumped hurts so bad. But I eventually got over it. You know, it's not really her fault. She wanted somebody that was close up there. Or maybe she felt like her attachment to me was holding her back. Like, she didn't want to tell me that she wanted to see another guy. But, you know, maybe this is her way of breaking it off. Whatever. And as I went from 16 turning to 17, I was cool with it. You know what I mean? I was still sad, but I, it, this is something everybody goes through. Everybody goes through their first heartbreak, right? Here, I would like to take a short intermission and entlacht, as they say in France. I would like to tell you about a truck, okay? My dad gave me a truck on my 17th Christmas. I was 17 years old. He fixed it up nice, tinted the windows, gave me lights. It's still one of my favorite cars I've ever owned. Seriously, making this got me so nostalgic. It is a 1994 Toyota pickup. I loved this car. I still do. And I was so thrilled to have one. Took it out, drove like a dream. My dad got it for me, fixed it up all nice. The approximate value of this truck is $5,000. Act two, hell on earth. A bit of time has passed, okay? I'm 17. I'm still online. I'm still on AOL Instant Messenger. Out of the blue one day. I'm just sitting around, minding my own business. Who do I get a message from? Pam. And she seems different. That's five whys. Even at 17, I knew what that meant. I remembered how she broke my heart and how I felt. So I messaged back, what? But then she said this. <sighs> I am simply a man, okay? We start talking about the trip, lol, yeah, sorry I was so mean, blah, 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 I didn't know what I was doing, I just, I was awkward, you know, and we both sort of agree that we're different people now, and we would love to meet back up, right? Just, just a, a meetup, a friendly meetup, you know what I mean? Just to catch back up, because we've been friends for so long at this point, and now I can drive. In fact, I can take this lovely new truck my dad just got me, so I said, Okay, you know what? I think I'm gonna make that trip. Now, we had an issue here. I didn't have a much adult or parent supervision 
But I couldn't just go to Massachusetts for a week. So I had to come up with a plan. I told my mom that I'd be gone for a week, and my mom was like, okay. <laughs> my mom my mom didn't really, my mom trusts me a lot. She was like, okay, whatever. My dad, however, was not as easy to convince because I'm taking his truck up there. So I had to talk to him. My dad is being played by Oscar award-winning actor Robert De Niro. Now, what contrivance can I come up with? What scheme, what caprice? Thought about it a bunch, couldn't really come up with anything. I, I think I probably could have just told him I was trying to go up there to get laid, you know, whatever, but I, I wanted to come up with something. I told him, my friend's family is going on a trip, and I would like to go with them. They are going to a theme park. I didn't once say what theme park it was or where it was located. I straight up told my dad, I'm going to go to a theme park. And he was like, okay, why can't they drive with you? And I said, uh, because I'm going to leave early. They're going to stay for two weeks. I'm only staying for like one week or maybe a, l a few less days. Dad is like, that sounds silly. Yeah, but what are you going to do? <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> he says that a lot. And with that, I'm on my way to Massachusetts. He didn't know. Stop saying he knew. He didn't know. I fooled him. And so we meet up and we start talking. And everything's great, actually. She's awesome. She's funny, as I remember her. Uh, she's really smart. I should have said all this before, like, <laughs> the things that are good about her. I should have said this, like, at the beginning. <laughs> I've just painted only the bad parts. So Pam and I meet up. And we go, you know, we're talking and hanging out. And we said, hey, let's go to a really fancy restaurant. And so where do you go when you want to go somewhere really fancy and nice when you're 17? That's right. Olive Garden. We went to Olive Garden. Did you know they have unlimited pasta and breadsticks? We're talking. So how have things been? Oh, pretty good. You know, school's going the same. I'm about to graduate. Oh my God, that's so cool. I think she was like a, a class younger or in a class ahead of me. But then we're coming to the end of the meal and we're vibing, right? Everything's good. Pam says, hey, I hope you don't mind, but my friend is coming by. He's going to join us for a bit. And I'm like, oh, cool. Okay, sick. Great. She intercepts me. She said, it's not a boyfriend which is, I think, what a lot of you guys in chat thought. It's not a boyfriend. He's gay. Oh, okay, sure. I didn't need to know that, but thank you for your transparency. And so, her friend shows up to Olive Garden. Let's call him Ted. Ted arrives. Ted is being played by uh, noted actor Sean Hayes. Ted shows up, and he sits with us at Olive Garden, and we start talking, and within five sentences... I come to realize I really don't like Ted. He's ignoring me most of the time. He's only talking to Pam. He doesn't involve me in the conversation. They have all their own little inside jokes that I don't know about. And he's like making snide comments about my, my clothes and shit. He's just like being very catty. And I'm like, dude, what's going on here? But I'm like, okay, he'll only hang out for a little bit. Ted didn't only hang out for a little bit. We go back to Pam's house. Ted is there. We go to the Boston Aquarium. Ted is there. We go back to the Friendlies, where I inherited scar tissue that would affect me for the rest of my life. Ted is still there. And, and this, is, this is legitimately one of the most humiliating moments of my life. The night ends with us watching Team America World Police and watching as they played Super Mario Brothers 3 together without me while I just watched. At one point in the night, I'm burying my head under pillows trying to sleep because I had a very long day getting to Massachusetts. And all I could hear was this. I drove seven hours. This girl won't be alone with me for more than 15 minutes. Ted, please leave. They're like, hey, do you want to play a level? I'm like, no, I don't want to play a level. Where's my head? It's under the pillows. I'm desperately trying to block out the heinous acts that are happening only 300 feathers away. This is, to this point, the worst day of my life. They play Mario 3 until about 1 a.m. And I said, oh boy, 
time to go home. Pam and I go home, and then she drops a bombshell on me. Hey, uh, Zach, I don't know how to tell you this. My parents don't know that you're here, and I don't know where to put you. Can you sleep out in your car? I spent the night in my truck. By the way, you guys saw the truck. This doesn't have a back seat, and I can't recline. So I'm, like, laying out, okay, as much as I can. Miserable, right? And knowing that I'm going to have to keep enduring this shit. But you know what? It'll, it'll, it'll all be worth it. I drove seven hours for this. I'm going to see it through. You know, her and I will spend some time together. We'll connect, and maybe something nice will happen. I don't know. Legitimately, I'm not looking to get laid explicitly. I'm looking to connect with somebody who I really liked. I'm serious. You guys think I'm memeing. I'm not. I, I, liked the, I liked Pam a lot. We had a real connection, I thought, back when I was 16. Even if nothing, well, something was going to happen. But, I, you know, even if something happens, it's like we go our separate ways and then we remain friends, right? So I'm sleeping in my truck. And then I am awakened by a sound. I ignore it. I continue to doze off. That is, until I hear the sirens get closer. Until they're seemingly right next to me. Then I hear a knock on the window. Hello, sir. Can you please roll down your window? I roll down my window. What seems to be the problem, officer? Uh, yeah, we got a couple of ca uh, calls about a vagrant sleeping in his car on this road. Uh, you got some place to be, sir? And I, I uh, bless my young heart, I told him the whole story. <laughs> so I tell him why I'm there. I'm like, hey, uh, I'm here. My girlfriend is inside. Maybe I wasn't completely honest. My girlfriend is inside. I'm just sleeping out here because she locked her door. I think I said she locked her door or something. You know, I talk with him. I'm 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 well spoken. I'm eloquent. I have registration. Everything. Like I I don't seem like I'm a crackhead, right? And I guess that's good enough for him. He's like, you better not be here tomorrow. And I'm like, I won't be. Now I I was lying to him. I thought I would be. I thought I was staying a couple days. But he leaves, and then I start thinking to myself, you know what? I don't deserve this. I don't deserve to be treated like this. I'm gonna go home. I drove seven hours to meet Pam, and she can't even give us 30 minutes together alone? This is the same thing that happened to me when I came up here a year ago. And so I wake up the next day, and Pam comes out, and of course Ted is fucking there. I feel like she didn't come out until Ted was there. Ted, can you please give us a, a fucking second? Yeah, okay. And Ted goes away, but not really. Ted's like hiding behind a tree. Hey, listen, uh, I drove a really long way. Um, but clearly this just isn't working. We're not connecting. Like, I'm just not having a good time. I gotta go. What? Why? You and I haven't talked at all. It was a full day of hanging out with Ted. You and I haven't spoken a, a hundred words to each other. What? That's not true. We played Mario together. Whatever. She's not listening. I'm gonna go. Okay, fine. You should at least kiss me before you leave. <laughs> no. I'm not kidding. I said no. I drove seven hours for not even a kiss. I gave Pam a hug, and we went our separate ways. I get back in my truck, and I drive from Massachusetts all the way back to Maryland. Or so I thought. You see, dear viewer, you might be wondering, where does this $5,000 cost come up? I, I'm sad to say, things started going pretty poorly in Connecticut. I am driving on the highway home. Everything's going normal, except for the fact that at some point, my car keeps acting weird. It keeps, like, going slower or just not responding at all. Things are just getting a little strange. Now... I didn't mention to you guys before, my dad is actually an auto mechanic, but he never taught me the intricacies of a car. I want you to see what I saw. This is, I'm pretty sure, the exact odometer that I had in my Toyota. Something was happening. I knew the gas, gas was on F. Everything was fine. 
And this is where the story gets humiliating. This meter is acting very strange on the left, okay? It's going up to H. I don't know what this little line is, but I'm pretty sure it's the oil. One thing I should have mentioned, I left on a Sunday. There are no auto repair shops open at 3 p.m. on a Sunday in Connecticut. This is a time kind of before cell phones, I think. I think you had some, but I didn't have many minutes. Maybe I was out of minutes. I don't remember. Things are bad. Eventually, I come upon a Tiger Mart. If you don't know what this is, it's an Exxon, okay? And I'm like, okay, I don't know what to do. Keep in mind, my dad thinks that I'm at a theme park. So if I get stranded here, I'm fucked. Now, I have no idea what this odometer means. But to me, there are only two juices in a car. Gas and motor oil. I just grab a motor oil. I don't know why I thought it would fix things. I think motor oil is like a, it's like the antidote. Like I put it in the car and it'll just be fixed magically. So what I do is I uncap this and I pour two motor oils into my car. Drink up car. Glug, 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 glug. My car drinks both motor oils like a champ. So, I think all is well. And I get back on the highway. And things are going from bad to worse. About 15 minutes later, I hear a... And I see this. My car hood had blown up in my face. I am in the left lane of a six lane highway. There is no shoulder on the left and I can't see a fucking thing. My windows are down and green juice is spilling out of my car. What the fuck is that? Is my car bleeding? I have never seen that before. Some of it gets on my lip because my window was down and it actually tasted kind of good. Chat, I will tell you what this was in a moment. But there were more pressing matters because I was about to fucking die. This is me on the fucking highway in Connecticut. Good luck, everybody! Look out! I have to go from the left lane to the right lane. I am weaving in and out, swerving like my life depends on it because it most certainly fucking does. Eventually, I do make it to the side of the road. My car won't do anything. My car literally will not turn on. It, it won't even sputter. I told you that I got a little bit of this green juice on my lip, right? And I accidentally ate some of it. Dear viewer, this green juice is a concoction called antifreeze. This goes in your car to stop it from overheating. My car, unbeknownst to me, was hotter than the sun right underneath that hood. And it got so hot that it exploded. Please do not drink antifreeze. I would not recommend it. I, I will say antifreeze at that time, at that time in our lives, I think they changed it, tasted sweet. Don't do it. Don't do it. I can't take, I can't keep going with this bit. Kids are going to watch this. Do not drink antifreeze. I think it tastes bad now anyway. Eventually, it cooled down enough for me to drive it again. I drove it to the nearest hotel and uh, I, I charged my phone. And I called my dad. And I said, Dad, I was coming home early from my friend's theme park trip, and uh, I, I need help. And my dad's like, you left after one day? Yeah, uh, the theme park just sucked. And my dad is like, okay. And so my dad has to drive five hours to come and pick me up from Connecticut. He is angry. Remember, this was his truck. This was his baby first. He souped it all up for me. Remember, I got this for Christmas, and this was like six months later. This was that summer. And now he's up here in Connecticut trying to help me out. Now, at least my dad was a mechanic. So I thought to myself, hey, he'll be able to fix this. He'll be able to make it work. And so we somehow get the car, I'm sorry, the truck, into a corporate parking lot. And my dad starts putzing with it. Futzing with it? What's the word? He's messing with it, okay? Did this thing overheat? I'm like, can cars do that? 
I thought cars were, like, self-regulating. And he's like, what happened? Oh, I was on the highway, and I was driving, and then the hood blew up, and green juice went everywhere. Green juice, huh? Zach, that's antifreeze. Well, it's delicious. My dad tried for about three hours to get this car running. But unfortunately, it just won't stay on. The thing just, it, it's, nothing's happening. He said, what did you do when it blew up? Oh, I got some motor oil. Why? It's car blood. And I think at this point, my dad is starting to have some, like, it, he's realizing it's his fault. Which it is. I can't be blamed for this. I was 17. I don't know how to operate a car. He gave me a car and didn't teach me how to use it. And he was a mechanic, by the way. I think this falls on him more than anyone. So eventually, we take off the license plates. We get out the stereo system. Get rid of everything we can. My dad and I drive away from Connecticut, leaving the truck in the parking lot. This was a $5,000 Toyota pickup vehicle that we had to leave because someone, and I, I don't know who, you know, I think it's shared blame, caused this car to lose its life prematurely. However, there is a happy ending to this story. For you see, that truck is still out there. You want my truck? You can have it! I left everything I drove in one place in Connecticut! Now, you just have to find it! The truck is real! The 94 Toyota pickup is real! I hope you can find it. Please send me a photo when you do. That is the story of the $5,000 booty call. Thank you all for joining me this evening. I appreciate you all listening to my very long dumbass story. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, it's somewhere out there. It's somewhere out there for you to claim. Go out there and find it.